So this is the snake king cobra. It has quite the high topology, so for the sake of not having lags, I will use the low poly version, perfect for animating. So now, if you want to move the whole snake to some other position, you just use this huge arrow. If you want the snake to follow a path, you just edit this path. You can always you can always add more points for him to follow. And in order to move him along this path, you just have to move this cube up or down. And you can move it wherever you're currently having the snake. So, how will this works? Well, the snake is really following this plane. Along it, these armatures are parented to three of these vertices. It didn't have to be individual armatures, it could have been empties, but I didn't figure out how to parent them to the vertices in their pose modes, and I went and winded up using whole armatures. Really, this could be replaced by empties anytime. And these are followed by the rig, but I'll get to that later. However, if you want to change how much this snake is extruding from the ground, what you gotta do is just select this plane and, well, change the blend shape that makes this happen. If you want to edit the snake further, for example, make his tail move differently or his head go up, what you gotta do is use these buttons to enable, well, custom control over individual parts, and choose whether whether to influence the head or the tail. The difference between these two is that if you choose to use the tail on the head, but if you activate this, it will stretch the snake a lot, which, as you can see, isn't very natural. But if you use the correct ones and use the head on the head, he will never pass that point. These are objects and not bones, so you can use proportional editing to activate them in a nice gradient and edit multiple of them at once. and it will never stretch. You can also edit the tail at the same time, but use the tail one. When they're snapped to their original location, they're disabled. When they go left or right, they follow either the cubes or the spheres. And when they're here, I don't know, so maybe don't do that. And however you rotate them, you can always reset them back to their proper place. However, the next issue that happens here is that if he moves along the path, his head will fo still follow the ro rotation and roll of the path. Well, to roll this, you need to press Ctrl T. As you can see, this would be a very undesirable effect. So in order for the head to not follow the path, you need to use the scaling of these. So don't use these like that. I'll set them back. And as these are activated, you need to scale them up. This makes it so that those points follow this cube. No. Those circles follow this circle, and the cubes follow the cube, which means what you gotta do is put this to, well, wherever you activate the effect from. In my case, it's over here. And I choose this main parent circle to follow that bow. So I'll add a constraint, copy location to that. 
now these circles will follow that point and I can set them up to be like this. And now wherever this snake goes, his head will not roll on the global axis, but still on the local axis, as you have noticed. And to fix that, we need to enable the absolute custom rotation control, which is by rotating these. And now the rotation they follow is actually in the armature itself, which is over here. So that you can see better what's happening, I'll enable these. And now if I rotate them along the z-axis, they can be rolled however you want. This will not work on the other ones, because they are not enabled to do so. However, you can always do this. You can just rotate this one. And now, it will follow the roll of this. You can also scale these. No, but let's say you want your head to be looking somewhere or constantly following a target or a prey perhaps. That's what you do from the rig itself. You can scale this thing up and now it's enabled and now wherever you put this, the snake will be looking over there. However, this moves along with the snake. So perhaps you want to disable the child of constraint and put it somewhere and now it will not, never move along with the snake and just be looking over there no matter what. There's also another one which happens to be a different object which if you scale his eyes will be looking over there no matter what, no matter where he goes he'll always be looking over there. The only armature you will need is these. You don't control the body through the snake's armature. That's all done by these external empties. But what this does is you can animate his face where he looks. You can also open his mouth. And in order to animate the facial expressions, I would suggest using the high poly version for this because you will see every little change that happens what it really looks like. You can make him blink with these. You can also make some no nose movement if you want him to look like a bunny. Move this up and down. Move this in and down. It's really painful for my computer. Now, as for his tongue flicker, what you have is this bone over here. And when you pull it out, it will pull out the tongue. Okay, I'll actually show this on this part. It will be slower. It's a very poorly done action constraint, but these things always happen super fast, so it doesn't matter. I don't recommend animating in too much when it's only halfway through because IK constraints don't work very well with actions they don't know if i if i want to put it in here it just snaps over there just just don't either animate it here or when it's out now it's safe to move and the second issue with this tongue is that i accidentally animated it to go from there which isn't even a place for a tongue that's where the snake breathes through and i did a poor job at that as well so maybe somebody fix that, please. And a last blend shape important is that when you move this up, it will spread his neck. Why? Why would any creature do this? Always make sure that the path is finished before you start animating any further. Because you can always make adjustments in the future as you're making well, as you're continuing animating, but if you try to change anything on the start, you'll notice that the snake gets dragged back, which will offset everything else you have done. And let's say your snake is really curled up, and you don't know which buttons influence what part of the body anymore because they're all overlapping 
all you gotta do is take this giant cube over here and scale it up. And now every one of these buttons will follow that and you will see exactly what it influences. This is actually the armature with deformed bones. They actually follow all the proper bones in the rig. And this is what you use to bake and export your animations to other programs like Unreal Engine. And what you should know about this is that every single one of these bones is disconnected. None of them has a proper parent because Blender is bad at baking bones that are parented to each other and stretch. However, if Blender ever fixes it, here is a version with proper parenting. You can always switch it, make this object follow that rig. And so there it is.